All right, cool. Hey, welcome to Music Mondays, everyone. Welcome to a special edition of Music Mondays with Terry Khan. Tonight is our Broadway edition. I was supposed to have on secret. I couldn't find any. And we are here with our guest, award winning Mr. Antoine L. Smith himself. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Mr. Smith. How are you? Wonderful. How are you? I'm great. <laughs> Welcome to Music Mondays with Terry Khan. I was just saying, I hope that this is not going to be Music Mondays with Terry Khan and Ethan Ohima because they are unattended. My husband is not home tonight, so we pray that um, she stays in the room. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Kelly. We, I know that we have limited time with you, and uh, first of all, thank you. I'm honored to have you on the show tonight. It's I'm honored to be day. here. It's not every day you get to speak to an Emmy Award winning um, actor and singer such as yourself. Thank you for taking the time out. Come on, Emmy! <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if I had an Emmy, when I get one, I think I'm going to sleep with it. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Every time my camera's on, I'm just going to be like, hey, I just want to say good morning. You're so funny. Hey, Dom Kelly. Hey, Dom Kelly. And um, I know, like, I mention it every time <laughs> that we talk. But I mention it because it's not an easy feat. Like, you just don't wake up one day, start singing, and then get an Emmy. You know what I mean? And um, you and I go way, way, way back. <laughs> Over a decade. Over a decade. And I was fortunate enough to um, to share a stage with you in the beginning stages. So <laughs> just seeing, right, just seeing you blossom into this, like, or... I, you are always an amazing actor. Seeing that the world has now recognized who you is, mm -hmm. it just it just makes me proud. So yes, every time I mention your name, I'm going to mention your Emmy. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and let's so, not get it twisted. Terry Khan is major herself. So give yourself some accolades. You know we bless the Lord, but tonight is about you. <laughs> It's I want to start it. from the beginning. I always love starting from the beginning because um, you have all of these amazing credits under your belt. But I like to start at the beginning. Tell me about your childhood. Were you this uh, Apollo star? How did this all start for you? <laughs> well, I'm originally from Gary, Indiana. Home Come on, Indiana. Michael Jackson, my fellow Virgo brother. It is Virgo yes. season, so everybody nice. recognize. Um, I'm originally, originally from Gary, Indiana. Um, my grandmother was a playwright on my father's side was a playwright. And I remember as early as five years old being in her plays and my grandmother on my mother's side played the piano. So there was always wow. <clears throat> music and, and, and artistry right. around me as long as I can remember. And I mean, living in Gary, Indiana, we had, it was predominantly black, so we would watch the Cosby's and different world. Right, right. Like we were engulfed in some culture. And then um, my family moved to Iowa. Okay. And all that demographic changed. So, you know, we had to uh, adjust to that. We, we, I mean, we adjusted. I mean, it was great. There was no, you know, no turmoil, no conflict or anything. Right. But uh, I, I did community theater when I was young in uh, Sioux City. I did, of course, theater and choir in school mm -hmm. and high school. Went to college for classical voice. So, you know, I've always been a part of music or the arts of some kind. Right. From little From to down. now. Now, you mentioned being born in uh, Indiana and then moving to Iowa. And I always admire people. I call it the big move, right? The people that move to, like, either New York or Cali and say, I am going to pursue my dreams. Like, I don't take that lightly. 
You know what I'm right. saying? I was always a punk. I was like, I'm not moving out of my mama's house for a long time, right? I'm coming <laughs> <laughs> so And it happens point, that way sometimes. Right. So at what point did you say, mama, daddy, grandmama, everybody, I'm I'm going to move to New York and, and I'm going to really pursue this? You want to know what's so funny? Before I moved to New York City, I was actually on tour with uh, Sesame Street and I was playing cool. Big Bird. And a friend of mine <laughs> said, uh, so I have this room. We would have to share this room, but your rent will be $250 a month. Okay. I said $250 right. a month. I'm going. Uh -huh. So right. I literally left tour uh i don't know i i left my contract early they they didn't wow. they, they didn't have any qualms about that and i just okay. said mom i think i'm just gonna move to new york city i have an apartment for 250 dollars a month i had a job set up already my first job when i moved to new york city was um working at williams sonoma which is like a high-end kitchen appliance place okay and, uh, then I got a second job as a chef at this place called Chocolate Bar, which was inside of Henry Bindle. So okay. the setup for me to come here was was perfect. So I just took the opportunity in right. 2007, and here we are. 2007. 2007. December 2007. December 16th. So take, take us back to your first New York audition. Ooh, my first New York audition. Yeah. Well, actually, let, let me let me rewind. Okay. I'm, I'm going to tell you about my first real New York City audition. And okay. I'll tell you about when I moved here and started auditioning. Okay. So back in, uh, ooh, I want to say maybe 2004, yeah, probably 2004, they were having auditions for AIDA. Okay. I was like, oh, I know I can sing. I'm about to go to New York City. I was in Texas at the time doing doing some uh, some regional theater. And I was like, okay, I have two days off. I'm going to go to New York City. I'm just going to audition, and that's going to be that. That's so it. I flew all the way to New York City. I was non-equity at the time. I really didn't know nothing about, oh, non-equity, the equity. Right, right, equity. right. You're going to be waiting. And you just knew I you sat saying. there for like seven or eight hours, I believe. Yep. Yeah, we're not gonna be able to see you today. Uh, do you know that I just flew all the way here from Texas? Are you telling me that you're not gonna see me today? They didn't ask you to and come. <laughs> they, they did not ask me to come, and they did not ask me to sing that day. So, right. Oh, oh. I got back on the plane, and I flew back to Texas, having not auditioned in New York City like I thought I was going to. Because, oh, I can sing, I'm about to Right. Do. So it didn't work out that way. But anyway, so I moved uh, to New York City in 2007, December of 2007. And in May of 2008, I booked the national tour of Cats. Yes. So it only took a couple of months to, it was, it was actually my, was it my first audition? It was either my first or second audition because I moved that, there in December and there's really not anything going on till like February, March. So <laughs> I think, yeah, May was my first audition and I, I, I booked it. Some people's story. Like I was going to say, you, you have a blessed story. Some people are like, I came to New York with $4 in my pocket and I slept in my car for like a year. And oh, wait, would you know me. what? That is not true. Well, I don't know. It kind of wasn't an audition, but... We did uh Jesus put your lay your head in the window. Your head in the window. But I don't even think I auditioned for that. I think I was do I don't even remember the the man's name, Reverend. What was his name? Oh, okay. I don't know where I met him or what, <laughs> what how, how that situation happened, but he just said Oh, um that that was Reverend Corbett. God bless you, Reverend Corbett. Yeah, bless you, Reverend. And Keisha, your wife? I don't know. Uh yeah, I don't know, but that was that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was that. I don't know if they watch it. They might be. Who knows? I always see but, into that, but God bless them. God bless them. 
It was a great experience. We did that. It was like, oh my God, was that on Fulton Street in Brooklyn? That was one of like my first plays. I don't remember where it was, but I know that when we were there, we were we were there. I guess. Yeah. And we do not despise small beginnings. It was we it was a great experience. Do not. <laughs> <laughs> but so you you grew up in this musical home, which is wonderful. So who were some of your like musical influences? Uh, well, my grand my grandmother was definitely one of my musical. Heroes. Oh, that's so nice. But um, I don't know. I like soul singers. Like I like music. Soul Child. Hey, ja I used to like Jaheem until today. I guess he was condoning the person in the White House. You know. Let's just talk about his musical ability. <laughs> I mean, the musical abilities are great, but those are overshadowed by some of the decisions that Question he makes for right? their own people. I, I, I will. I don't. Until I interview him for Music Mondays and Terry Khan, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Well, anyway, Donnie Hathaway. Uh, yes, Donnie. Uh, Donnie. You know the singer Donnie? No. His name is just, just Donnie. Just Donnie. He has this album called The Colored Section. Ooh. I mean, old school. I'm going to send it to you. But I Please. like, you know, I like songs like that, like soulful songs that hit you right here in their storytelling. And, you yes. Know, the Erica Badu's, the Jill Scott's, <gasps> you yes. know, those India Ari's. Yes. Those are who Love I like. Singing. But now we're talking about like theater and stuff. Uh, you know, Bryce Stokes Mitchell, you know, the, the people whom I, I, I share the same vocal. Oh, 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 oh. He's going to sing. Yeah, the you know, he's going to sing. Don't worry, he's going to sing. He, he, you said what? I said, don't worry, guys. He's going to sing in a few minutes. Uh, did I tell Ooh, you that? Oh, me? Uh, yeah, you know, give us like 16 bars. I mean, I might give a little 16 bars. But no, yeah, like, you know, like that Norm Lewis that I've looked up to forever, and then you start auditioning, and you're like, oh, hey. Right. It's a whole different thing when you watch them growing up, and then you're, you on have the, stage the, with them? the blessings to be on stage or auditioning for the same parts as them. You know, it's, yeah. We're going to talk good. about some of the people that you've been on stage with. but And I know, like, you're you're more than a, a Broadway actor. You do voiceovers. You do it all. But tonight is our bro. It's all about Broadway tonight. And yes. I just wanted to, like, shed some light on the bro Because let me say this. It's one thing to be a singer, right? And, like, right. to go into a recording studio and record. My vocal coach is, like, the studio is where you can live your best lie, right? Right, right, like, right. <laughs> But it's another thing to have to deliver in person twice a day, six times a week. Well, eight times a week, two, two times a day on Wednesdays and Saturdays. And sometimes See, okay, so listen, I, I want to talk about, uh, hold on, I want to talk about all this. Take us through the audition process. I've auditioned for one major Broadway show. I auditioned for The Lion King. It was the worst decision I ever made in my life. I was just like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was online for, I feel like it was, I think it was eight, eight hours. Yeah, between that and American Idol audition, I was like, I don't even want to be a singer anymore. I, I was online for like eight hours outside, you know, we inched up, inched up, inched only to get in the room to have you. They were like, okay, start. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. It's crazy. People don't realize how how it is until they've experienced it. That cattle call, okay, so take us through a real Broadway audition process real quick. Uh, <laughs> let, me, let, me, let, me, let me think, okay, I'll, I'll take you through my Broadway debut audition process. Okay. That's a, that's a good one. But you know, some, some of them, you, you go in and you audition once or twice and they're like, boom, let's go. Right. Some of them are like, okay, so, uh, <laughs> My phone just went dark, sorry. So it was 2011. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was doing this off-Broadway show called 
honest Abe about Abraham Lincoln. I was playing a slave, and it was it is what it is. Um, <laughs> so uh, my agent texted me, or not texted me, emailed me, and said they're having uh, appointments for the Memphis tour. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh great, I'm gonna go in and audition. I was auditioning for Gator for <clears throat> for the national tour. You know, rounds. Of, I don't know how many rounds I went through. At least probably like six or seven. If anybody knows Memphis, they know Gator don't say much but eight words and he sings one <laughs> song. So I, I, it was it was at least like six or seven audition wow. callbacks. You know, the oh, initial Lord. rules, yeah. the initial callback for the the whomever, then they bring in more people and more people, more people behind the table, et cetera, et cetera. Right. They're like, yeah, sorry, uh we're just yeah, you're not you, you didn't get the job. Mm-hmm. June. This was this was in April of 2011. Uh-huh. Uh, June of 2011. Call back in Memphis. Oh, okay, great. This time is for the Broadway. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, great. They didn't want me for the tour. They're definitely not gonna want me for the Broadway. But you know, right. I'm gonna do my due diligence and go to um, my auditions. I get there, there's three people, me and two other people. I'm like, okay, mm. maybe, is somebody about to be? Anyway, so uh, we go in in our, our, our auditions. We danced uh, in the morning for like, I don't know, like four hours. And they said, okay, everybody come back uh, this evening and we're going to sing and read sides, whatever, whatever. Ooh, yeah. Do all that. Get, get get down to 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 the final final, and they're like, "Okay, we'll go home, and we'll we'll let you guys know uh, what happens." And then the next day, my agent called and said, "You're gonna be on Broadway." Yeah. So people's journeys are different. Like I didn't yeah. do the tour, but then they were like, "Hey." Come on and do Broadway instead. Uh, I don't know if I want to do Broadway. Right. right. So, <laughs> right. So of course, I I I I got it in July. Fifth mm. uh, was my first rehearsal, and July nineteenth, I made my Broadway debut. Hey, Eden. I knew it was gonna happen. Say hi, Uncle. Hi. And I actually, doing? I had I had the pleasure of seeing you in Memphis. Oh my God. Phenomenal, right? Phenomenal in Memphis. I saw you at Color Purple. Phenomenal. So, so now take us through. Now you have been casted for the Broadway production. How thick is this book? How many songs? I know it varies from you know play to play, but on average, how many songs are you learning? What's the uh, rehearsal time frame like? You know, for all Broadway guys, please, you rehearsing for like a year. For Broadway, <laughs> for like real Broadway. Well, you tell us, because, you know. Well, for real, Broadway, you Mm -hmm. have technically two weeks of rehearsal, Mm. but that probably equates to about 24 to 48 actual hours of rehearsal, because nobody is is rehearsing like, you know, you know, like that. Anyway, so, well, maybe not. Yeah, actually, yeah, because it, it was it was a speedy process because I was a replacement and it was like, oh, okay, okay. We, gotta, we gotta get going. So, and I kid you not, I kid you not, anybody in 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 in, in Memphis can attest to this, but I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you, yes, uh, when 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 I first started rehearsal, it was you learned all the songs in probably like one rehearsal, maybe two rehearsals. They and about get, how many songs are we talking? We're talking about a two and a half hour show, so uh, I can't even tell you how many songs Memphis has in it. It has it has quite a few. And you're but learning this in one rehearsal. One or two rehearsals, yeah, because you gotta you gotta start dancing. Right. Now the dan- the dancing was the hard hardest part for me because I am not a dancer, but they said you wanna be on Broadway. I said, Yes, okay, <laughs> I said, Okay, I'm, move that feet. I'm a dance. I'm a dance. Right, right. So literally, I kid you not, it was like 
one and a half or two days of music and not full days. We're talking about, okay, you got four hours this day, you got four hours this day, you got to dance, you got to start learning this blocking, you have to lift this one girl, you have to put this one girl on your shoulder. Wait, what? <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm a singer, not a dancer. You got me doing <laughs> lifts with people that have danced with Ailey and, 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 right. and, and went to Michigan and, uh, okay. So anyway, learning all this music, learning all this choreography, and 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 I get into the show. My first show was was Tuesday, and I kid you not, you can ask anybody who was in the show. That Saturday, the stage manager called me and asked me if I could go on for one of the lead roles. What? <laughs> Terry. Zero put in rehearsal, zero any, I kid you not, anybody that was in Memphis will attest to you. But I had watched the show. I was able to watch the show, so I don't know, uh, subconsciously. Right. Everything yes. <laughs> was in my brain, and I went on for Delray Saturday for two shows and Sunday for one show. Three shows. Broadway debut on Tuesday. Lead role on Saturday. You go. You. I mean, he only called you because you know he could trust you. Au Trav said because he's a superstar. Exactly. Thank you, Au Trav, Mukbang you know. King. But uh, yeah, that that that's literally what happened. Wow. And my wow. mind was blown. And when when the stage manager called and asked, I immediately just was like, Yeah, I can do it. Because okay. I, I don't know. This is my first Broadway show. If I say no, am I allowed to say no? I don't right, know. Right, right, right. <laughs> but, uh, that, yeah, that's what happened. There, you have so, especially when you're a replacement in the show. Now, when you're first coming, when you're when you're part of the original cast, of course, right. you have two months okay. or something to learn all of the music, all of the, all of the set moves, all of everything. But when you're a replacement... Everything that those people learned in two months, you have to learn with two weeks. I'm going to put in quotations, two weeks. That set moves, dances, music, harmonies, costume changes. Da, 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 no pressure. Da, 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 no da. pressure. So, no pressure. Yeah. No pressure, but all. So we're, talk we're talking musical theater where it is important for you to be a triple threat. So you got to sing, sing. And I, well, we say you have to move well. You don't necessarily have to like strong dance. Strong mover. Strong mover. <laughs> Which is basically a dancer, but right. You know. So you got to be able to sing. You have to be able to act, of course, right. and you have to be able to dance. So you mentioned a typical Broadway show. You are performing twice a day. G give us the schedule. So. uh... Tuesday, Tuesday, you have one show. Wednesday, you have two shows. Thursday and Friday, one show. Saturday, two shows. Sunday, one show. But sometimes you have a nine-show week, depending on if it's like a holiday or uh, for the Actors Fund, where you do right. an extra performance to uh, for money to be donated for actors that may need it in the future right, for right. Like this very instance that's happening right now. Mo Pretty much every actor is is out of out of work. At least each live theater that is right, right. So to have the actors fund and to do that ninth nice show, you're tired, but you know it's for a good, it's for a great cause. So what is it? Oh my god! And of course, every show is not you. It's not like you can be like I'm gonna give them half of this show because it's the matinee show. No, you have to be on every single. Time. So, what is it that what is it that keeps you going? Like, what is it for you personally? Uh, the main thing is, first of all, you have to think about the, the people that are on stage with you. You know, you have to be. You know, sometimes you can get into a daze, but then you, you got to remember to think about the safety of the other people that's on stage. So, yeah. being mindful for that and just having the opportunity to even be on that stage. 1% of the people who audition for Broadway or move to New York City for Broadway 
make it on Broadway. One one percent. Just think about that. So to have the opportunity wow. to do that and have done it several times, thank you, God, thank you, ancestors, thank you, you know, just I'm grateful. I'm so grateful. So it's it's your it's your gratefulness and uh, obviously your passion for what you do that keeps you going. Absolutely. <laughs> definitely the passion, definitely the gratefulness. Because you know sometimes there you know you have a day where you 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 get to work and you're like, "Oh man, I'm tired." But then you get out there and you say, "Man, look what I get to do. Like I could be doing something that I do not want to do." But I'm doing something right now that I absolutely love to. Right. So that also helps. So if you were not an actor, singer, dancer extraordinaire, what would you be doing? What was like your plan B or was there ever a plan B? Uh, the, well, there's all the, the one thing my parents said and I, they never discouraged me from doing anything like art, art field, but they said, just make, just, just have a plan B just in case. Right. So I would, I would be a chef without, without a doubt. So these meals that you put on IG is not just because, oh, I, I'm understanding now. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Okay, mommy's doing her show. You have to be quiet. You see what I mean? Okay. Where's my husband? Okay. He said, get on, let me on there. <laughs> hey, Lo. Hey, Zanifer. Hey, guys. Guys, um, if you like my earrings, it's by Lois Frey. Go and support her. Sorry, I had to put that in there. Um, and we talked about some of the, oh, my God, you have shared the stage with Jennifer Hudson. Mommy, and I wasn't giving me my Okay. You have <laughs> a disaster. You have shared the stage with Thank Jennifer you, Hudson. Yes, I agree, Micah Jordan. He said, your voice alone is the plan B. You were good from the start. Thank you very, very much. No, you could really, like, sing, sing. But anyway, you have shared the stage with Jennifer Hudson, with Cynthia Arif. You know how I feel about Cynthia. Danielle Brooks. Danielle Brooks. Jennifer Holliday. Um, who, else was in, who else was in that show with me? You know, all, all, all you know. Greatness. Amazing that, people. That people. So, Heather okay. Headley. Woo! Heather, all oh, right, because she did um, and Fantasia, right? Were you? No, Fantasia was the 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 original. The okay. Produ like the 2008 production that closed. Got you. So you did the one with Heather. Yeah, with Heather, Jennifer, Cynthia, and then Cynthia. Jennifer. Jennifer Holiday, the Dream Girl, mm -hmm. Jennifer Holiday. Ugh, I just got to get the stink face for a second. Because <laughs> as I said, I was fortunate to come and see you, you know, in that color purple. And I was just uh, amazed. Um, so who is like on your bucket list, though? Who is like, okay, I have this list of actors that I want to share the stage with. Who have you not been on who, this stage Oh, with? who yeah. would I share the stage with that I have not shared the stage with? You know what? I, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know if uh, if she sings or not. But this Viola Davis does something to my spirit. Viola, when I see her, she's phenomenal. Act, like she literally does something to my spirit in every single thing yeah. she has ever done in her life. She's phenomenal. So I don't know if she's going to be in a musical or I'm going to be in a play, whichever it is that yeah. she would be, she would be it. What about um, Felicia Rashad? Oh, the mother of a nation, right. the mother of a, a people. <laughs> a mother <laughs> of the people. Now, I, uh, of course. Yeah. Legendary. Yeah, I can see like playing her son or something. I can see, I can see you do that. Yeah, uh, she, yeah, she's brilliant. But you know, I'm in Broadway inspirational voices, and she's also in that. So yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Felicia Rashad. She's wonderful. She's great. She's great. Take us to one of 
one of the greatest obstacles that you have had to overcome? One of the greatest obstacles I've had to overcome. You mean in life or in theater or in, in life? Ooh, we get up close and personal with our artists. One of the biggest obstacles I've had to overcome over in my life. Uh, and, I, and I'm not. I'm not saying that I don't. I'm perfect and that I don't have any. Um, life has just been good, huh? No, life has been good, but I think the biggest obstacle I had to come over is probably the passing of my grandmother. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Well, both both grandmothers, to, right. to be exact. Um, but my mother, my mother's mom's passing was a big one for me because I, I, you know, she was like, "Oh, I'm gonna come see you on Broadway one day," and then I made my Broadway debut, and she literally passed away that September. I made my Broadway debut. July, she passed away in September. So I'm so that sorry. was a really hard one for me. And I, when we laid her to rest, I took her to play. I put the playbill inside, and I was oh. like, "Mama, you're yeah." That was that was that was a big one for me. So. Okay, okay. Yeah, I kind of get teary eyed just thinking about it. She had she had like the dopest seat. You know what I mean? She had the aerial view. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah, that was that was a big. One. Awesome, awesome. Now, what what advice would you give to an aspiring uh, Broadway singer, actor, I say musical theater artist? You know, I, I'm going to say this, and people are going to be like, what? Tell it. Tell the truth. Don't take everybody's advice. Mm, speak on it. Now, when I say that, come on, it's because everybody does not have your best interest at heart. And what works for other people may right. not work for you. True. So you have to take chances. You have to grind. You have to make find out what works best for you because everybody's advice is not for you. So that would be my main advice. Like, take your own chances because the only way that you're truly going to know what works for you mm. is by figuring out what works for you yourself. And everyone's story is different, right? Everyone's story is different. Like, I, I hear people, you know, uh, audition for Broadway their, 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 their senior year or their junior year and get it. Some people audition for Broadway for 20 years and never get it. So right. it, it really, truly is everybody's journey is going to be different. So mm -hmm. that's, that's always the piece of advice I try to give people. And that's not being harsh or anything. It's just... No, that's real. You know, you can't ask some stuff. You just got to figure it out on, on right. your own. That's amazing. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. And you know. Yes, Lois Frey. People think success comes overnight, but for most people, it does not. For some, yes. You know, that's so crazy. Thank you for that, Lo, because one of my questions on here is what is your definition of success? My definition, if, if you're happy with what you have, if you're happy with, with what you're doing, like that's, mm. who, who else to gauge your success but you? Because if you start letting everybody else gauge your success, then what? who are you doing it for? But if you let, Anybody else gauge your success, you'll never be successful because you'll never you, be decide, successful. you can always do something more, better. You right. know, it's up to you. It could be you had five hundred dollars last year, now you got fifteen hundred dollars this year. Are you a success? Yes, show sure is. <laughs> <laughs> so it's 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 up to, it's it's I, it's truly up to you. I love it on gauging your success. Wow, wow. Keep that personal. I love that. What shall you be singing for us on tonight? <laughs> Antron uh, L. Smith. Uh, I actually, while you're thinking you know of that, I'm sorry. While you you're thinking what? of that, I just I said while you're thinking of that, 
what's next for you? I know you were in the middle of a production and um, that's been put on pause. So what's next? What is next for me is MJ the Musical. Ah! Coming this spring. It's going gonna, it's gonna to come. I mean, it, it's you. definitely going to come. Well, you know, we, you know, we got to be realistic now. We thought we were going to be on a two-week pause in March. I know. I and here know. we are in August, and they saying now ain't nothing happening until at least January. So, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm very optimistic. I feel, I feel like if they can open schools and risk um, all the children's lives, that they're going to open up. But program. not even that. They've already opened the movie theater and said, come see a movie for 15 cents. Exactly. So I figure they're going to open it up and be like, we're just going to social distance the chairs with the actors on stage. I don't know what's going to happen, but I think. I, mean, I, 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 I don't even know. Like I've seen pictures of people with these masks on their face the doing, face shield. doing love yeah. scenes with masks on their faces. <laughs> I mean, I'm be all about be whatever we need time. to do to make it happen, but it just, it just looks... I don't know. That's interesting, though. I'd rather you be safe. And so I'd rather come and see you with the face uh, shield on than, like... I would, I, 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 I would rather okay. be... I would rather be at work with the face shield, shield on than to not be at work. But you know what I don't want to see? I don't want to look out in the audience and see 12 seats. I, well, yeah. <laughs> that's in that's a 2000 seat theater and you see 12 that's, seats? <laughs> Talk about social distancing. I know. No. I know. <laughs> I know. And, I know. And, and in order for that to work, all those seats would have to be $100,000 a piece. Right. Oh, my God. It's so... Corona, could you just go somewhere? We just need Corona to go. But anyway. Corona, can you please go somewhere? Put yourself in the mail, because the mail is taking forever to get. Go mail yourself. Priority, like real quick, express. <laughs> like, it's just so crazy how it just came and changed the trajectory of our lives, especially as a performer. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so uh, Michael Jackson on Broadway. That's you. Coming this MJ way. the Musical coming this spring at two, 2021 it's gonna happen it's gonna happen and i'll be there of course you will i'll be there no pun intended <laughs> just call my name and I'll okay okay you sing you sing i don't know uh let me let me see uh uh uh, uh let me look hold on, hold on. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of one of my grandmother's favorite uh, songs. Okay. What's up, Patrice Covington? I'm trying to think of a song to sing. Give me, give me something. You Patrice guys have was, any suggestions? Patrice was, uh, was squeak with me in uh, the color purple. Oh, what's up? Hello, Patrice. Uh, what do you want to hear, uh, Terry? Anything you're going to sing. Um, uh, si ooh, sing, a Don sing a Donnie. No, I'm gonna do a little bit of blessed assurance. I'm gonna do a little. You know, my grandmother was very she loved okay. the Lord, and I Come feel on. like her her spirit is in, in this place. So I'm gonna do a, just a, just a uh, verse in the chorus of blessed assurance, my okay. way. Okay. Okay. <laughs> blessed assurance, Jesus is my. Oh, a foretaste of glory, a glory divine. The iron of salvation. Purchase our God. Oh, no, his spirit. I've been watched in his blood. That's it. That's all I got. That's all I got.
You know, I'll take it. I'll take it. You got the head. <laughs> hold on. Patrice, hold on. Patrice Covington is on this making everybody holla. She said, you cannot have sexy eyes and sick about jeans. Oh, <laughs> Patrice. Don't do it, Patrice. Yes. Listen, when I say, in, you know, in life, people come into your life when they're supposed to come into your life. And when I tell you Patrice Covington came into my life like a wind. She's she's one of she's one of my great friends and I appreciate her more That's than anything. Amazing. That's amazing. I love you, Patrice. Ah, Antoine Emmy Award winning actor, singer, dancer extraordinaire Antoine L. Smith, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Patrice, thank I love you, you a long way. So 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 much for being our guest for the Broadway edition of Music Mondays with Terry Khan. Thank you for I having. Me. I want no. Can I say this, please? And I, I always do this to her. My friend Patrice Covington is on here. Let me tell you, she would be great for your Music Mondays. Patrice Amazing Covington, vocalist, if you would, if has you would music out, me. also Emmy Award winning, Grammy nominated. What? Yeah. Please, Patrice, if if you would have me, Patrice, please. She be would be a hoot on your show, and I mean, Miss Covington, if you would have me. Um, Please DM me your email address so I can send you the deeds. Thank you. Please, Patrice, she's fine. She's fine. I've known her for I'll over a decade. It. I won't for say real. how, but I will. I mean, I already said 2007. 2007. Oh, my God. Wait, and you were one of my first background singers. Oh, I was. <laughs> <laughs> I was. How did I? Yo, oh, and oh, Antoine. Antoine been riding with me for a long time. And I plan to ride with you for a, 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 a longer time. Come on, stop making me cry. I worked hard on this concealer because I'm real tired. <laughs> <laughs> but I appreciate you. I love you. And I look forward to more Emmys and Grammys. And Tony's and, and like Oscars, oh my. All that. Grammys and Tony's and Oscars, Emmy, oh my. Okay, I'm All that. I'm, I'm, it's, coming. it's coming. It's <laughs> coming. It's coming. I love you too, Patrice. And she said thank you, Terry. Yeah, thank you. Thank but you. But yeah, I'm going to connect, connect y'all. I feel like y'all have a lot of a lot of common ground. That would be great. Thank you so much. And thank you all for tuning in to Music Mondays with Terry Khan. Thank y'all for bearing with my kids screaming in the background. Even <laughs> <laughs> an Ezra. Yeah, take them, take them. Tune in tomorrow morning. We'll be on WESL Radio at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for Afro Praise and Inspiration with Terry Khan. Tune in. Information will be on my page. Charles Browning. Another fabulous actor. Sorry, I'm excited. All right. All God right, I love you, you Terry. Thank you. Love you, Twan. Be well. Bye, God everyone. bless you.